I'm Kat Aniva, and thank you so much for tuning into Holo Holo, your one stop for the latest in entertainment news, lifestyle features, and community events. Today we talk about several important topics involving our community. It's the Justice for Filipino Veterans. And joining us today is Tito Al Garcia, Tita Faye, Attorney Marcus Mosante, and Veteran Alfredo Credo. Thank you so much for all being here today, especially Mr. Credo. Um, thank you so much for your service, for fighting for our freedom, for everything, and for being here. Thank, thank you. you um, Tito Al, I'm going to start with you because you are wonderful in updating our audience when it comes to JFAV and everything that you guys are doing. I know early March, late February, you went to Congress. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, w I would just like to report on our activity, uh, our lobby uh, in the U.S. Congress. Uh, from February 28 to March 1st, I was with uh, the Justice for Filipino American Veterans and a group of uh, uh, student leaders from Samaan Filipino and we lobbied in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, all in all we were able to talk to 45 uh, staff members of the Congress and we did not uh, talk to any congressman. Mm -hmm. But uh, sorry to inform the public that our bill, the Filipino Veterans Fairness Act is still not uh, pushing through because uh, election is coming so we will still come back to the U.S. Congress maybe around June to lobby again and to get more congressmen so our uh, number of congressmen who supports our bill will go up. Okay, and then Attorney Marcus Musante, I know you're mm. um, fighting for veterans' rights, right? How did you become involved? Well. I moved to Compton mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time in Carson, mm -hmm. but I moved from San Diego and I spent a lot of time in National City and Chula Vista mm -hmm. and I'm from San Francisco, so I've been around the Filipino community my whole life right. and um, I'm running for Congress mm -hmm. and as a defense attorney, you find a group of people or you find issues who need, you know, like a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And so through getting to know the Filipino community, mm -hmm. I've learned about this issue and about how Congress is not taking care of the Filipino vets. And I, I always believe in hope. And I do think that we just need kind of a new, f fresh, um, fresh blood back there and this is one of those issues that I would very much fight for because it's gentlemen like this that allowed us right. to be victorious in World War II and we forget about a kind of war on that scale. Yes, um, Mr. Credo, tell us your story. What would you like to share with our audience here today? Yeah, it's terrifying when we were called to active duty by the U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. Because when Ordaneta was liberated, that is when Do uh, Douglas, uh, General Douglas MacArthur returned, mm -hmm. was liberated on this day, for example, that is January 24, 1944, I-45. In the evening, a messenger sent by our commander, me here, telling us that Tomorrow morning, that is January 25, 1945, we will go, we will assemble at, in front of the municipal building or the data. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not tell our family. I was just, I was just married in 1944, November 8. Mm -hmm. So almost less than three months old. Uh, the, my wife don't know that I'm a guerrilla. Oh. So oh, wow. when we were there assembled the next morning, there are already the trucks, passenger trucks there of the U.S. Army. Right. So they fool us in by platoon, by companies like that. Wow. And then my plat uh, the platoon which I belong is the closest to the passenger truck. So the Americans said, okay, yo, this platoon, go to the truck. And then they brought us to Binalonan. Mm -hmm. That is next to Ranita. Mm -hmm. And there we were as we were given uniforms, guns, how to operate the guns. Mm -hmm. 
and we were assigned as guards of the big guns, the 105 millimeter field artillery battalion or artillery. So there. How long did you serve? Oh, from up to March 1945. Wow. Um, Tita Faye, I know you've been a part <laughs> of the fight for justice as well. I know you have some comments because you've been studying, you know, the role women play. Yeah, when yeah. I got here in 85, I was a uh, part of this long, long year movement mm -hmm. because uh, when I got here, I connected with Senator Mervyn Diamond Lee, and mm -hmm. that's only when they were trying to make the Filipino American veterans citizens. Right. Yeah. And it's been like, what, 60 years? Yeah, over uh, yeah. half a century. And ago. this mm -hmm. bill is very important because it talks about the survivor pension for mm -hmm. women and mm -hmm. children and families. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're dragged into this war, really. Right. You know, because the Philippines was under the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. And and you don't question them for a lump sum of 15000 You know, it's not. Yeah, they're teenagers dragged into the war. Right. And the role of women, you know, also the Filipino women were made comfort women mm -hmm. by the Japanese invaders and this most most of them are nurses they also mm -hmm. became couriers mm -hmm. so but when the veteran dies what do you do with the widow you just right put them and in the gutter family, right? no they had a role in the war right so it's really important that they get a pension yes very important for them for their family uh, how can we help as viewers the filipino community what can we do is there anything Basically, we can do? Basically, we want the, the Filipino Americans and everybody to know, even people in the Philippines, mm -hmm. that uh, we are not giving up the fight. Right. That's why we we want full military pensions for the remaining 25,000 Filipino veterans yeah. and the bigger, yeah. bigger number of 68,000 widows and relatives of Filipino veterans. They should get this uh, because out of the 66 nations that served uh, during the World War II. Do you know that uh, Australian, British, Canadians mm -hmm. are given pension by the United States? Mm -hmm. That's why the Department of Veterans Affairs has a very huge budget, and yet the only nation, the only uh, group that is uh, discriminated against and are not given the, the these, uh, benefits are uh, the Filipino-American veterans. So that we should support the bill, we should support the uh, Marcos Monsante, who will really fight for our uh, for our uh, yes. fight in the U.S. Congress yes. and sign petition, call your congressman, and join the Justice for Filipino American Veterans. Yes, you are nodding. Did you want to? Yeah. Well, I thank you, and uh, it's true. It's it's a question of justice. This isn't politics, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and the Filipinos are a great example of that. Right. You know, they kind of transcend because they care about the issues. Right. And it's outrageous that other countries are already getting this. Yes. And if you look at the Filipinos and you look at the the nursing right. and you look at the relationship with the Navy, not just you know Army, that what more do you want mm -hmm. from a demographic what more do you want from a people it's obviously love with the nursing and they've obviously fought for mm -hmm. this country yeah. and I'm sorry but there's enough money there is it's how you want to spend it yeah. and the Filipinos deserve um, to be taken care of they they shed the blood mm -hmm. and the widows shed the tears um, okay. and you have to take care of the women who took care of the men mm -hmm. who defeated the greatest evil um, thus far right. and um, I, I'm definitely I want to help lead that fight yes. and I thank you Thank you all, actually. Uh, for more info, to be educated, to find out, all we have to do is head to JFAB's website, right? Mm, JFABUSA.org. Okay. Again, the website is JFABUSA.org. We'll be back.